What's up guys, Vince here, and welcome to the final part of my homecoming Spidey suit, which I will be covering the puff paint. Now this is the most time-consuming part of the process, besides all the other work I've done on the suit, I've been puff painting this thing for months. And I actually just finished it not even that long ago, maybe like a week ago. And if you don't know already, what puff paint does is give your suit the texturing. It makes a simple soft spandex suit look like, you know, a movie replica. It gives it that texturing that you see in movies. Now of course, you know, Hollywood with their million dollar budgets, they have many resources to do this way better. But I don't, all I have is these hands. <laughs> so the best I could do is, you know, puff paint like I've done with all my other suits. Now this particular suit, now if you've watched the movie already or seen pictures, you know that the red has some little texturing in between the web lines. So there are these little red dots going in between each of the web lines. That's what also gives the suit its shine. It makes it look shiny on the red. So what I'm going to be doing to replicate that, or what I've already done actually, is use slick deep red puff paint from Tulip. Check it out. You've probably seen this before, you know, I've used it on my other Spider-Man suits. I'm gonna be going through the whole suit painting each individual dot. If you thought painting my bat suit details was bad, this is even worse. <laughs> so for those asking, hey, are you ever gonna do a puff painting video? Yeah, when I'm done. <laughs> now one more thing before we begin. I actually opted out to not paint the blue, I only decided to paint the red because, well, not only would I have taken longer and you would never see this video, but I just think it's a little bit unnecessary because in the movie it doesn't really look textured. Now, the blue does look shiny, but it doesn't really look like nothing's 3D, nothing's popping up. And I think it has to do with the checkered pattern, and obviously on this suit, the checkered pattern is just printed on. It's a pattern that's just printed on. I think on the actual suit, the checkered pattern looks that way because it's actually interwoven fabric so it's most likely two different blues interwoven like a basket weave and that's what makes it look like a checkered pattern maybe there could be a chance that i end up painting the blue for some reason but for now i doubt it i think it looks good you know just like that i'm also not going to be painting the black as well because that would just simply be inaccurate unlike previous movies the web is actually not raised this time around it's actually carved in and the reason it looks that way is because the red around the webbing is what's popping out now instead of the webbing itself. I've seen some people do end up painting the black because it looks nice and it just brings it out more, makes it look shiny. But again, even though it looks nice, it's just inaccurate. Now this video is going to be pretty quick because I've already puff painted suits before and I don't think I have to repeat myself. It's all similar. It's all the same process. The only thing that changes is the suit. But yeah guys, let's get to it. All right, so if you see my previous videos, you know the deal. I laid down the suit on some cardboard here. Now, unlike my bat suit that was unsewn when I painted it, this one is already sewn up. So I had to stick some cardboards inside in order to stretch it out and flatten it out. Now I could also use my mannequin, but I'd rather just have it flat out because that way I could get into the edges without having to tilt or anything. I also stuck cardboard right here at the neck. And, you know, I'm using slick deep red puff paint and some plastic applicator bottles, which as you can see, I got from Hobby Lobby for $4.99. So I got my paint here and let's start. So you see what I'm doing here is just adding little dots and like that through all of the red. Okay, so for the arms and legs, I just stuff them with some grocery bags. Just stuff them up to stretch it out. You can see I've already done it. Look at all the little dots. There's no pattern on the costume for me to go by. So I just make sure, you know, all the dots are as close together as possible. I don't know if you guys can see it. But there you go, it's all painted. All the way through. And for the head, I just have the mask on the face shell and my mannequin head here to stretch it out. And I'm doing the same thing, just painting a bunch of little red dots. And that's all there really is to it, guys. It's just painting a bunch of red dots all over the red. The main issue here is just time. This takes a lot of time. You gotta have a lot of spare time to do this. If you're doing it alone and by hand, which is why I've taken so long to release this video, it's just really time consuming. Alright guys, 
guys, there you have it. So my suit is complete. Now I also want to mention another little thing that I changed and it is the belt cartridges. Now if you watch the video for the strapping, you'll know that I originally made the web cartridges out of foam, which was, you know, a quick, cheap way to do it. But not long after, I discovered these on shapeways.com. They are 3D printed and made by Calandro. And it was actually so recent that I am officially the first person to ever buy these. So I went ahead, gave them a try. I ordered them in red 3D printed plastic. Obviously, I painted them to look like how they should look. And yeah, I admit, I gotta say these are much better than the ones I made. They're more screen accurate and have all the details. And another funny thing is that even more recently, Prime Props, the guy who designed the pattern, released his own version of web cartridges. And his are urethane rubber, which bend with the suit. And I honestly wish I could have waited a little longer or uh, he could have released them a little earlier. But now it's too late. I've already glued these on and if I take them off, it might ruin the suit. But these are cool too. And you know, they work for my costume. All right guys, so now I'm gonna give you the budget. Are you guys ready? All right. So this costume, everything, and I mean everything, web shooters, cartridges, rubber strapping, emblems, shoes, lenses, puff paint, uh, and uh, face shell, everything all together winded up costing me just a little under $500. But it's half the price of an RPC studio suit, and I don't even know what other people charge, probably thousands of dollars. But yeah guys, if you know where to look and you take your time, you can have your own homecoming spider suit for under $500. But yeah guys, that's it. It's been fun building this suit and it's my favorite cinematic spidey suit so far. Of course, there's always room for improvement. I'm always willing to upgrade whatever needs an upgrade. So if I ever do, I'll make a video about it. I've actually made some more upgrades to my bad suit, which I haven't shown because I've been so busy with this suit. But hopefully I get to show you guys all that stuff. And I don't know, I guess I'll see what I'll do next. But for now, thanks for watching guys. Peace.